Hey, YouTube. How do you do? Tube. Tube. Uh, anyway, we have a siege here. This was Say Swag Again versus Malicious versus Apocalypse. Uh, the way this one played out, you can kind of tell from the map. This was a one versus one siege between my guild, Say Swag Again, and Malicious, the Legend Guild. Apocalypse largely just hung back, hang just you know, hang back and let us fight our battle, and then they took over the map at the end. Um, this is the third time we fought against Malicious since I joined Say Swag Again, and it is the first time that we actually beat them. So, was a lot of fun. I did seven of my attacks off stream because it was a tough fight and I wanted to get my hits in, you know, early. I didn't want to just show up six hours late like I usually do. So, did the majority of my attacks uh, long before I started my stream, and we will talk about those now. Let's just get into it. First up, familiar, familiar face, you know, it's, it's Tractor Lulu Windy. Mally had several towers of their Carcano Praha Tyrannus. They kind of had them, well, they, they had them starting on our side of the siege map, and then they replaced them with like the Molong stuff later on, I think. But earlier in the, but early on in the siege, we had several towers of this to fight through, which is perfect for me because I have a... I have four copies of a team that I can just copy and paste and fight this defense four times. So I, I'm loving it, you know? Uh, largely, this one goes, you know, as you expect. We just focus down the healer over and over again. Um, and eventually we hopefully win. You can appreciate the lovely golden battlefield courtesy of Malicious. Holding that legend rank at the moment. Or at the moment for three seasons in a row now. They are pretty strong, if you didn't know. Uh, so we have a Despair Praha here. Always interesting to see how people, you know, build different copies of the same defense. So this one is Despair Praha with Destroy Runes somewhere. I haven't looked closely enough to pay attention to which of these monsters is on Destroy. Basically, they're not destroying enough. They're not destroying fast enough, so it doesn't really matter. We're just going to do our thing. Kill Praha. Then work on the rest of them. Wish that Carcano would stop getting into stance so often, because I'd really like to punch him, but... Keeps aiming that big old gun at us. Probably should have killed the first life of the Tyrannus there instead of hitting Carcano, but we didn't do that. Oh well. Now he gets Praha back. We take down his Reviver now. And clean up the fight. We are going to see this fight four times today. That's just kind of how it is. We'll see, uh, we'll see if anything changes in the next ones. This is the only attack that I made against Apocalypse uh, because we did take their, their front row of towers at the very start of the siege. So they had some new creative stuff. This is the first siege on the new balance patch. So they've got the buffed Mi Yang with the nerfed Fuki. They also had a couple copies of this where they had Ayunu in place of the Fuki. Uh, we didn't get to hit it too much because we were fighting Mali instead. But with Mi Yang and a single target wind monster, I figured, you know, Talc is a really good tank, right? These monsters can't get through a Talc. So I'm just going to bring Talc and some fun wind toys, and we're just going to beat him down. Was, was my plan here. So we get, you know, there, there's Fuki at really low health, still not able to do any damage at all to our water tank. Although the AoE did take a chunk out of our wind monsters. But yeah, Tal Talc's pretty strong. He, uh, he can tank some hits there. Land a nice provoke to end the fight sooner. Not letting that beta get any heals off. Good stuff. And now back to fighting Mali. We have the same defense with the same offense. Very exciting. Um, somebody asked on my last video... Yes, I do move my runes around all the time. So every copy of this offense is on the exact same three sets of runes. I move a lot of the artifacts as well. So I have like one 
22% wind damage reduction artifact that's on all of these Lulus that you're seeing here. Um, I have a good additional damage artifact that I move to each of the um, Windies. But it's only 9% fire redu reduction and then 3 lines of additional damage. I'm not heavy fire reduction because most people don't build their Carcano to do that much damage. So we just you know, do our usual thing. Kill the healer. His, you know, damage monsters don't do enough damage to get through the tankiness of this team. And we just, you know, punch them and do whatever kind of attack uh, Windy does, I guess. Throws some ghosts. At, yeah, I think he throws ghosts at people, doesn't he? I don't know. I wouldn't want someone throwing ghosts at me. That's for sure. Hold on, right here. Let's talk about this turn. Um. So here, we call this, you know, complacency. Uh, even I get a little bit bored when I'm playing this offense. I get that it's slow. Believe me, I understand. I do it a lot. Um. So on this turn, in my head, I'm on autopilot. I've already killed his healer once. I just got to kill it again and then punch the rest of his monsters to death, right? So I'm just tapping my skills away, you know, waiting for the victory screen. And I didn't pay close enough attention because right here, this is the throw of the century. This is the most important turn in the video. Um, we have, we're thinking we have a team that's full health. Like, he hasn't done anything to us this game. He's not even on destroy. What are we worried about? So I just, you know, hit him, throw a skill one at him with my Lulu. Why not? Uh, I have skill two available. I absolutely do. But who cares? My whole team is full health, and I just, I'm just i just going to kill him and win, right? Uh, that's not right, as you can see. As, or as you're about to see. Um, my Lulu is not full health. My Lulu has a sliver of health missing. And... I know it's hard for me to tell, but that sliver of health is bigger than the sliver that's missing off of my tractor. Uh, if my monsters were actually at full health, the defense break would aim for the tractor. So, what we could have done is skill to ourself on Lulu, which would either put us at full health, or, it, it, you know, if we, it would give us immunity, first of all, and if we violent proc out of that immunity by, for some reason, then it would give us a, it, we'd be at full health and we couldn't be defense broken. But instead, we, we just hit skill one because we're on autopilot and we're not thinking enough. And now there's a defense break. That's rough. You know, I am 100 resistance, but that doesn't, that's not an excuse. Uh, you should still have a plan, right? So our plan should be use your brain and put immunity on your monster that can get defense broken in any situation where it's relevant. And what we should have been thinking is there's a bear form defense buff druid over there. And this is absolutely not the time for us to get defense broken. So here's what happens. Carcano defense breaks us, right? Then, uh, you know, he goes into stance. They heal up. That's not really relevant, the healing thing. So the druid gives us a smack. Uh, 28,000 damage. That's a big chunk of our health. You know, we are on heavy wind damage reduction, which is why we didn't just explode completely. Uh, and then what happens is Carcano shoots us, which is understandable. It is off element, but we're below, you know, we're like 30% or below HP and we have a defense break. So completely normal for Carcano to shoot us there. Um, one thing I will point out is that my Lulu's tuned for like speed tick number six. So every six ticks, my Lulu takes a turn. The Carcano is probably at tick five, which means that the Carcano will lap my Lulu once every six turns about. This is that turn. This is that one in six turns that the Carcano moves twice before my Lulu. Because if he didn't, then we could have healed ourselves. But again, none of that is unlucky. Because we have the opportunity to make that impossible. And we didn't do it. So don't be like me, viewers. Uh, pay more attention, especially when you're in like a really important, difficult siege matchup. And uh, don't just watch your monsters die for no reason. But yeah, that, that feels bad because uh, we are going to lose this. I don't know what kind of uh, 
feelings are going through my head that I'm still playing this. I should have just left. But yeah, this is a 100% a throw. This is what happens when you play this exact offense into this exact defense, like 70 or 80 times. You start feeling like nothing bad ever happens, and then you miss the the one moment where something bad might happen, and then that bad thing does happen. So, my fault. GG's to uh, to faint memory for for smacking us there. Up next, same thing, you know. And now I'm like, okay, we should pay more attention next time. <laughs> It's not the offense is bad, it's that I'm bad. So we're in the same fight again. We are doing the same thing we always do. Time to play Punch the Praha. We're thinking a lot more about having immunity on our team, specifically our Lulu. We're paying more attention to whether or not we're actually at full health. And not just, you know, a reasonable approximation of full health. Because it does matter. Like, if uh, if I wasn't using the in-game replay, if I, had, if I actually recorded this, like, live and didn't use the replay, you would see me pause on every single one of Lulu's turns and just take a moment to look at health bars and look at attack bars and then decide what I should actually be doing. <laughs> Because I was properly embarrassed at this point that I lost a fight that I should have won. Now's the part where I just try to fill time because I don't have much else to say about fighting this defense. We're not going to lose to it again. That's a spoiler. I apologize. Because if we actually pay attention, then this team really does work. Now we can talk about balance patch stuff, though. My general thoughts on the balance patch are that defenses got nerfed, and I don't think we're going to see a new defense that compares to the threat that Fuki, that Fuki posed. So I think that, like, in general, people are just going to have better offense rates this season. I think defenses got worse, and I don't think anything got buffed enough to replace the nerfs, so. I think that Lulu's still a good offense monster. I think that Carcano and Fuki are still good defense monsters, at least compared to the other options. I haven't seen any situation where I thought that Ayunu was more scary than Fuki, even after the Fuki nerf. But we'll have to see how that pans out. All right, here is the uh, the, the special trademark Mali four-star kinky defense and the same offense that we used against it in the last video. You just got to control his cleanser and his kinky as best you can. Uh, you see there we skill three his cleanser and not his kinky because the kinky had full attack bar and we would not have put it to sleep if we had hit it with our succubus, skill three at least. Oh, when I do have Succubus skill 1s, I'm never like hitting his Vigor with them. I'm using it to, psych to gain attack bar or try and sleep the other monsters. We, we fail to sleep on the Lala there, which means that the Lala gets to heal. But that's not terrible because, I mean, we're kind of tanky. We land the sleep on the Kinky. Kinky Violent procs. So, glad he only got one turn there instead of two. That's pretty big for us. Our Izari is built on Violent, like, I think plus 130 speed or so, with high accuracy. And, like, a decent amount of attack, but no crit rate, no crit damage. It's, uh, it's just kind of, you know, that. Elusia here does have uh, 50 accuracy on runes, plus, like, another 18 accuracy skill 1 from Artifact. So her skill 1's at like 68 accuracy, and her skill 3 obviously doesn't care about accuracy. Just like, really important, because a lot of these defenses, you're going to see max resistance on Lala and Kinky a lot of the time, I think. Really, you know, depends how they're built. 
I'm using Fuki because he has good runes, and I also explained why in the last video. One more of these. Um, back into Faint Memory. I don't know which Faint Memory it is. There's four of them right now. So I forget if this is the one that beat us or not. It's probably the one that beat us. It sounds like something that I would do. Get my revenge. We're looking for revenge here. And uh, seeing as I'm watching the replay on Fast Forward, I'm guessing that's a hint that I didn't think anything interesting happened, near the beginning at least. We did get defense broken on our Lulu there, but our Lulu was moving ahead of his Druid anyway, so it was not nearly as important as the, the defense break in the last one. Because Carcano's not going to shoot your Lulu on just a defense break. It has to be defense break plus low health, or else he'll just take the, he'll just hit the wind monster instead. So our revenge goes nicely. Looks more like a normal fight. I mean, the last one looked like a normal fight until the one turn that it wasn't, right? So, those you need to pay attention. Who is next? Alright, we're into the Molong stuff. I think they, they mostly stopped put placing the uh, Park Praha Tyrannus on us. And switched to Molong stuff. So here's my first option for the Molong today. Uh, I think we probably hit it more than once though. Because his defense is pretty good and everywhere so it's kind of really about picking a time to kill the Fuki in these ones and in, in this one I decide that I'm just gonna wait until after the Molly's dead because why not you know again I've got my 22% wind, redu wind reduction artifact on Lulu uh, there I was very surprised that that Fuki attacked my Ethna there I was not expecting that to happen <laughs> and it uh, gave me a bit of a you know Bit of a jump there, a little bit of a scare, but uh, I mean, Tessarian handles Fuki really, really well. Oblivion on Fuki basically makes him pretty useless, you know. And then I have a Lulu with a Tessar with a tank for Molong because Tessarian tanks Molong super well. You know, my Tessarian's on a, uh, a 20 or a 22 percent water damage reduction artifact, so we, we finished that one pretty well, but. Bit of a scare in the middle with uh, Fuki targeting our Ethna, and then the rest, or the last three fights, we did live on stream. So I'm gonna have to send it over to myself from October fourth. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I guess you know continue watching. Still, bye YouTube. Hold on, I wasn't recording. All right, Ciara. This is Ciara runes uh, with with artifact. She has max accuracy. Got 90 actually. Uh, Chasun is like this. It's actually our Lulu runes that we just moved over, and we've got wind damage reduction. Tagore is like this. Uh, he has water and wind damage reduction, and he's on destroy, but the destroy never seems to do anything. So let's get into this one real quick. and see how we can do with this offense. Uh, so first I want to make Molly use her cleanse on herself. Because usually what I do in these is I have Molly cleanse herself and then I start putting bombs on the Fuki. Because the Fuki is very scary. Now that Fuki, now that Fuki's been nerfed a bit, like, I don't know how scary he is. I assume still pretty scary. I mean, he's strong. Do I heal here? I guess we probably do heal here. Why not? Get some more attack bar on our chest soon. Alright, attack buff bomb. Oh, nice. And it's only one debuff, so now even if the uh, the Molly Vioprox, she's not going to cleanse that. Or I think she cleansed the lowest health anyway. But she didn't Violent proc. 
All right, so what we're going to do is try to get some attack bar here. And we can get an attack buff. And if we land this bomb, we win the match instantly. If we landed the bomb, we win the match instantly. So max accuracy Ciara, by the way, missed both dots and landed both bombs. I think that's the opposite of most people's experience with Ciara. My Ciara, I got the, uh, I don't have the best daughter Ciara. I got the best bomber version of the monster, which is really the one you're trying to summon. When you, when you summon your Ciara, you should also uh, summon best bomber and not best daughter. It's a, it's a big difference. You just got to know what you're looking for at the, uh, the summoning station. If I double bomb this, I guess I have to detonate, right? We can play around a bit. I want to test Molly AI because I think that. No, she'll she'll cleanse this, right? Or is it she cleanse? Or is it when she there's two buffs, some two debuffs? She cleanses the lowest health monster, I think. Let's let's test this out. Yeah, so she cleansed the lowest health monster and not herself. The the Molly AI will always go for the lowest health monster. And see, we land a bomb and not a dot. My Ciara just can't miss bombs. Like, dots are getting resisted left and right. That's not a problem. We landed none of them. But bombs, bombs are easy. Alrighty. Let's, uh, let's fight Bloody Claw here. And we'll try the same team that worked for us last time. Because we at least if we lose, we can be like, check my YouTube. I have video evidence that this team works sometimes. Um, increasing the attack power of this doesn't do anything, right? I guess it might improve skill three. Anyway, uh, Sath is on a despair build. I don't know if he's going to despair anything. He's mostly here for his passive. We put water damage reduction on him. Rain is on violent will. He has max accuracy. Uh, he's got some light damage reduction on him. And then Platy here is on um, max skill 3 accuracy. That's the important one. Yeah, Sap accuracy is pretty bad. I think we have a uh, skill 3 accuracy 17%. So it's actually 52 for his passive, which is one of his dots. Um... So the reason that we have Platy here is we want to reset his cleanser. We're going to reset his cleanser with Platy, and then we're going to control him with Thrain, is the idea. That uh, that might not go so well, but it worked for us last time we did it, so let's try it out. I'm going to have to build a second Azaria if, I, if we're going to keep fighting Mali every siege. Cool, we got outsped, that's good. We go ahead and we increase cool time there. I turn orders wrong. It would be way better to have Sath move ahead of Thrain. Uh, just to make sure there's continuous damage on everybody. But whatever. Slap his cleanser here. Don't want to use my heal right now. More dots. Good violent procs, or proc, singular. I got one violent proc. I think the cleanser is now dead. So let's make sure that this thing's also dead. That thing's also dead. So I think we very clearly win the fight at this point. Which is great, because I like to win fights and not lose them. Jeez, that's minus 22% water damage, by the way. Pretty sure it was 22. It was over 20 all right, no more skills, no more life, no more cool times, no more anything. We got him. Um, I think that... Let's hit Faint Memory. I don't know who this is. There's four people called Faint Memory in this guild right now. But we're just going to go in with this. The same offense you've seen countless times before. It's pretty slow. And I think we just save Ayunu for last. 
what I've learned about like Ayunu so far is that if you just save him for last, he actually doesn't do anything. It's surprising that there's a monster that doesn't do anything on defense, but I should have let Route kill that. Like, what's he going to do? Kill my entire team? Really? He's going to kill all three of them now? I don't think he's going to do that. Like, I don't know. Ayunu is cute, but I feel like you'd have to build him, like, full damage because you just ignore him. You just ignore the Ayunu, and he's not hard to beat. And then when you have, when he's the last monster left, you're like, okay, like his passive is fine, but he's not going to 1v3 me. Um, yeah, that's nice. So, that's nine wins today. Unfortunate we couldn't get 10. And I'll make a, I'll make a YouTube video out of the ones that I did off stream. Uh, so we did... Nine attacks into Malicious and one attack into Apocalypse. Um, the attack that we lost was 100% my fault. If, if I had a brain today, I would have had 10-0.